So this is a continuation of the Mind Your Language series, um, all about highlighting, discussing uh, words that uh, give us certain ideas and concepts um, in language and in natural science, um, and basically showing how these words are used to uh, implant certain ideas or concepts in our heads. So I think the last one we had was level. Um, this is one about uh, the word zero and also about its use as a natural number. So zero is not a natural number. Um, it does not occur in nature uh, anywhere. And basically it's the absence of anything and everything. So it can't possibly exist. Um, it cannot count as a natural number since it cannot be counted. And if there's nothing uh, there, if there is nothing, then there's nothing to talk about basically. Now, um, you know, that's from a natural science perspective. Now, zero, when, when signifying a decimal shift or, or an annotation, um, is certainly important to money lenders and other special interest groups. But um, any other symbol would have to work just as well. So using zero in, in decimal notation um, kind of introduces us to the idea of zero as, as an additional number. Um, but it's not a natural occurrence. Now, some might argue that it's highly valued for its use in the binary system, um, without which computing would not be possible. But the fact of the matter there is that it's just an on and off switch, right? Um, for gate switching in electrical or mechanical circuits, um, it's not a, a thing um, in itself. Now, zero was uh, initially thought to be, um, you know, a device of the devil, and there was a lot of resistance uh, until, as we said, the merchants uh, adopted uh, Arabic numerals and zero for notation and calculation, so that was how it became more widespread. Um, it's thought to have originated in India around the 1800 AD, um, and it um, it was a kind of school of thought that laid emphasis on the goal of of personal transcendence or transcendence, sorry, and escape from karma through renunciation of the natural world to the to the you know going to the full extent of mortification of the physical body. Um, that, that's now considered to be a kind of dark period of, of India. It's such a wonderful country and a, and a really rich uh, spiritual uh, culture, also in mathematics and in natural philosophy. Um, you know, I highly recommend looking at Vedic mathematics for people who want to do speed calculations and things like that. Um, yeah, but it basically, you know, broke with the, with the usual um, tradition in India. Um, and it also meant um, uh, that the structure of arithmetic had to be changed. Um, you know, up until then, uh, adding numbers together um, gave you a sum that was larger than the original number. But when zero was introduced, this all, you know, fell apart. So now you can, you know, add two numbers together and they don't get larger. They stay the same, such as three plus zero equals three or three times zero equals zero. Um, and then you get the horrible problem when three is divided by zero, where logic breaks down, and you know this is still a problem with mathematics to this very day. Yeah. Um, so treating zero as a as a number has no anchor in reality. There's nothing in nature that, you know, can help us. Um, but um, we do see that you know because the introduction of zero came about um, and was accepted, um, it allowed also more imaginary numbers and and a whole range of, of numerical and symbolical entities um, which had no verifiable concept or any geometric form whatsoever. Um, so the invention of zero permitted numbers to represent ideas uh, which had no form um, or had no geometry. And this basically also led to a change in the addition of, of the word idea, um, which was previously synonymous with form and geometry. So you can see how the addition of something like zero um, negates um, a lot of the uh, things that uh, were already there before it came. Um, nowadays, it's it's pretty indispensable in mathematics, um, you know. So it's used for a lot of things, but um, it's also impacted, you know, philosophies, theologies, and changed our views and attitudes towards nature, because zero is associated, if you like, with a doctrine that uh, negates the reality of, of the material world. Um, the actual uh, uh, original Sanskrit name for zero, sanya, uh, meaning empty, 
um, was translated into Shifra in Latin, which means null or nothing. Now, nothing is obviously something totally different from the, the word empty. Um, so we're, we see two meanings being confused um, through a translation of words. Um, also, the Sanskrit word maya took on a new meaning. Um, it was originally the power to divide, the dividing mind, um, and now everybody thinks it you know, basically means illusion, or that the material aspect of the universe is an illusion, i.e. nature is an illusion. Um, and we see the, the reverse duality of this uh, in, in our philosophy as opposed to the Eastern philosophies, where zero is a, is a framework for the development of atheism and and basically a negation of the whole spiritual and natural world. In fact, zero was so um, uh, had such a great impact that it, you know, basically caused physics um, of the 18, uh, 18th and 19th centuries to to adopt the atomic particle theory, where basically everything's little balls floating in a in a zero um, void or an empty void. Yeah, and that's the same bullshit um, as they talk to us about fake space. You know, um, as above, so below, and all that shit. But it basically disorientates people and and gives them you know a different idea of what you know nothing and space and void means. Um, common language stuff. Um, we'll just rattle through this quick. So symbol zero, uh, denoting the absence of all magnitude or quantity, um, the absence of a measurable quantity. It's used in temperature. Um, you know the zero mark, zero degrees Kelvin, um, and things like that. But it also means, you know, something insignificant or a non-entity, um, or something, you know, small and meaningless and insignificant. Yeah. Um, whereas, you know, where we can see where where this can affect the minds of people. Um, yeah. So there's kind of things like, you know, two two minus two equals zero. Um, the temperature is ten degrees above zero. Um, these are the kind of ways that we use it. Um, but a lot of the time, it's you know meant to say zero, zilch, nada. Um, and at the end of the day, you know the word zero has uh, and its meaning has no place in natural science or in mathematical reasoning. It's only really used in commerce and in if you like this negation of of nature or the material world. So not only is it time to uh, reclaim words, it's also time to reject words huh? um, if they are not real and if the sole purpose is to condition us to accept ideas of space and void or if it's being used you know in in commerce to facilitate our usury thanks for listening